talk to the men and women who play under the radar here in America and around the world, the ones who every day seek to dig out a sliver here and a slice there of intelligence that could mean the difference between life and death at any point around the globe, many times here in America. And they will tell you flat out, we have to keep collecting data and not have our hands tied by the government. Because if they are not allowed to do their job, they will tell you people will die and they cannot be held responsible. Lawmakers this week kicked out a bill aimed at blocking the NSA from collecting the phone records of millions of Americans. The game is afoot, so let's talk about it. Welcome into Hardline, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, who has been there before when ships are seized, governments are growing bolder. He's been there, Pete Hoekstra. Pete, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, great. Thank you. Good to be with you. You heard all of what I just said here, and that's what a lot of people in the intelligence community are telling me right now. June 1st, the deadline's coming, and they are scared to death that they're not going to be able to protect Americans. Are there those fears real? Are they realized? Oh, I think absolutely. I became familiar with the NSA program in 2004, and this is how rapidly the program has changed. In 2004, this was a gang of eight program in the intelligence community, meaning that there were only eight members of Congress that knew the capabilities that the NSA had and how, and excuse me, and how this program would be used to keep America safe. Now here we are in 2015, the threats to the homeland are significant, if not more significant than what they were in 2004. These kinds of tools, owning cyber is absolutely essential if we are going to keep America safe. Then, Pete, how do we drive this home to the American public to be able to understand? Because people are sitting there in their homes, on their computers, on their phones. They're scared that the government is just out there collecting needless information, and they want to use it against them. You and I know the difference here. Without this, we are less safe. How do we then drive this home and get the people in Washington to understand that? Well, that's, that's very, very difficult with what's going on today with the scandals that you've had in the IRS and the targeting of conservative groups and those types of things. They breed a mistrust of the federal government. That's why the average person uh, is scared of having government having access to all this data. They're just afraid of what the government may do. And that is a, that's a well-founded fear. But, you know, so... We have to explain to them exactly what the government is legitimately collecting, which are, in this case, phone records, but more importantly, how the government employees have access to or have the ability to access this data to keep America safe. It's under very, very stringent uh, guidelines, stringent requirements. It's primarily for foreigners and those types of things. It can't be used to follow Americans on a daily basis. It's, it has to be very targeted and specific uh, to go into that database and try to create the connections. And, you know, building that kind of level of trust uh, in the intelligence community or into the U.S. government is just very, very difficult. Pete, as we look at what H.R. 2048 is, the USA Freedom Act, all the different things that it entails, you've been there, you know the people involved, and you know what's happening currently. Are you safe in your own knowledge? that the NSA right now, the people collecting this data, are not going to use it against Americans and are doing it so that Americans are being kept safe and not being intruded upon? Uh, I, I believe that is the case. That was the case that uh, when we were there, make sure you put the right guidelines on, in place, and then you need to make sure that Congress does the oversight that is absolutely essential to so that the people in the intelligence community know what the lanes are and those types of things. You know, uh, I worked with General Mike Hayden when he was in charge of the NSA, uh, and, you know, they drove down in. And, you know, the people that are working in the NSA, these are our neighbors, these are our friends. Uh, they have as much love for the Constitution and American rights and protecting those rights uh, as anybody else in America. About a minute or so that I have left, Pete, do you personally honestly fear that if the hands of the NSA and other agencies are tied in some ways, as this act indicates, that we are at a greater risk of people dying, the terrorists will win in some cases, and we will then be picking up bodies in America sooner or later. The possibility of that will exist. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, because it's now not only the NSA programs, you know, there's a lot of information in cyber. Owning cyber, making the connections in cyber enables us to identify targets, identify, you know, bad targets, 
the folks in ISIS and Al Qaeda who want to attack us enable us to target them overseas, but also to identify who they are talking to and who they are working with in the United States, making those connections, identifying those networks. That's what keeps us safe, and that's what we're trying to do. Ten-second answer. Rand Paul says on day one that he is elected, he will end the NSA's illegal assault on your rights. His quote, is he naive? Uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, he's naive. He's a very, very bright guy, but I think he would put Americans at, uh, at greater risk. We'll have to call that the end for right now. Pete, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining Great, us. Thank you. All right, take care. Now, what if you could predict the winner of the next presidential election just by listening to crowd reactions during late night television? Well, not just late night television, but a very specific part of it. We'll talk about that next when we continue right here on The Hard Line.